Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Game Changer. I am Mariam Zia. In today's program, we will be talking about the unique and promising relationship between Pakistan and Turkmenistan. Uh, Pakistan uh, and Turkmenistan uh, relations date back to 1991 when th uh, Turkmenistan got its independence from USSR. And now both countries are collaborating in a number of fields and one of the major fields is of course trade and also uh, the energy cooperation between both the countries. Uh, when we talk about energy uh, cooperation, of course we know that uh, Turkmenistan has the sixth largest uh, gas reservoirs in the world. And there's a lot of potential when we talk about trans-regional energy corridors. In today's program, we will be talking about the potential of these uh, trans-regional uh, energy corridors. And when we talk about these energy corridors, of course, uh, TAPI is an important corridor uh, that connects uh, this uh, Central Asian uh, state of uh, Turkmenistan to the South Asian states of Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan in, and India. Uh, of course, uh, there are challenges when we talk about uh, TAPI as well. We will be exploring how to address these challenges for the regional prosperity and regional economic uh, connectivity and integration as well. To discuss this and more, we are joined in the studios by Brigadier Hamid Malik, who is a senior analyst. Welcome to the program. We are also joined by a senior analyst and expert in national affairs, uh, Dr. Zafar Nawaz Jaspal. Welcome to the program. Uh, Dr. Jaspal, let me start with you. When we talk about uh, Pakistan's uh, relations uh, with Turkmenistan, of course, both are brotherly Muslim countries. And this, of course, shared history, shared aspirations when we look about, when we talk about corridors like TAPI as well. So can you walk us through uh, the historical evolution of the diplomatic relations between Pakistan and Turkmenistan? Uh I think that uh, when we look about this, uh, yes, you are correct, you may rightly point it out that Pakistan and Turkmenistan has cultural, religious or historical linkages. But those linkages were completely shut down by or ended during the Cold War. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially when there was Afghanistan or Russian invasion in Afghanistan. So our diplomatic relations started with Turkmenistan in 1990s. So we have a 30 years of working or 31 years of working diplomatic relations. Prior to that, it was Cold War. Before 1947, Pakistan was not there. So we have a, a three decades history of the mm. relations and that history is very encouraging. Mm. So encouraging what are some of the key you know, uh, yeah. events in these? Encouraging is years. that uh, we have a you can say interdependency in a manner. Mm -hmm. For example, Pakistan need energy. And for energy, we are very much uh, working that how we multiply. Mm -hmm. We have an energy mix policy, which mm -hmm. we call it energy mix, that we starting from carbohydrates, hydropower, nuclear, all these kind of things. And Turkestan is rich with the oil, uh, with the gas and electricity generation. And that's which you were rightly pointed out, the TAPA is one agreement Turkmenistan, Pakistan, Afghanistan and India. But the problem with and second is what we call it a recently they have signed an agreement which we call the TAP that is Turkmenistan, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan for a power generate transition. Of course, I will be talking uh, in depth about this as well when we uh, talk about uh, the energy security and energy cooperation. But uh, let's talk about the diplomatic event uh, events uh, that shaped the history of uh, these two countries. Of course, there was a Cold War, War era. Can you tell us about some of the key events uh, that have maybe enhanced relations between both the countries and what were some of the challenges because we know that we are moving towards uh, the, the geoeconomics, but there was an era when the focus was on geopolitics. I think uh, my colleague has also very highlighted that Pakistan and Turkmenistan, we see a lot of uh, positives and a lot of collaboration as far as uh, their unanimous stance on global issues is concerned at the international level, that is United Nations, ECO and OIC. Mm -hmm. And what is that cardinal point between two countries? First is the neutrality that uh, Turkmenistan projects and propels that neutrality and for which they are very proud of also in the region as well as the globe is concerned. And Pakistan also m shifted its stance from geopolitical objectives to geoeconomic and CPEC. Apart from CPEC, if we see that what is TAPI itself, and it is also as the Turkmenistani objective and perspective is, they call it Grand Energy Corridor and Grand Energy Road. 
Of course. And TAPI is not only the supply of gas through a pipeline from Turkmenistan to Pakistan and India. It is actually a corridor which will have multiple options of available course. to Turkmenistan also. It will have a road link also, fiber optic link also, and the transmission line for electricity also. And for Pakistan, which is a already facing a lot of problem in the energy sector hmm. and the soaring prices, and I think only hope available to Pakistan is to have cheap gas as early as possible. It is not going to give a revival to our economy. It will boost our exports. It will give a new life to our production facilities of and course. to our uh, economy and the per capita income also and GDP also. Of now course. coming over to, as you said, what are the diplomatic uh, hmm. relations? What we see, fortunately, as far as Pakistan and Turkmenistan is concerned, the high level delegations of both countries has visited each other frequently. Hmm. Started from Pakistan, established diplomatic ties in May 1992, and the first visit by the Premier of Pakistan was in 1994, followed by 1997 and going up to the 2018 when our Premier last visited Turkmenistan. And on the other hand, the Turkmenistan President visited Pakistan in 2015, 16, and 17. And as far as the both countries have number of MOUs also. Right. In different fields of work and life. For example, they have own economy and energy. They have own uh, transport. They have also uh, MOU for education, for healthcare. Right. And for uh, livestock also. And if we see both countries' diplomatic relations, they have been supporting each other on the international forums. Mm. SCO, ECO, yeah. uh, CARIC is an also important organization yes, in they which have both been supporting countries on that. And the main focus of both countries has been the cooperation between each other for mm. the uh, global war against terrorism. Of course. That is also a key area where both countries mm. are contributing to each other. Of course, because uh, the regions are very close and yeah. interdependent sort of on each other when we talk about connectivity and uh, energy corridors as well. Uh, so, um, uh, Dr. Jaspal, when we talk about uh, mm. the energy security in the region, uh, what role does uh, TAPI play in this energy, in securing uh, the regional energy security? Of course, uh, many countries are uh, facing energy crisis and energy uh, issues, including Pakistan. Uh, uh, and also, what is? Uh, can you tell us about the progress on different uh, projects of TAPI as well? If you see that, uh, uh, the first question is, the, let me handle it with this way. This uh, Turkestan is, I think, sixth biggest, yes. having six biggest reserve of the gas. Yes. And uh, from there, channelizing this gas to the South Asia, that means that the eight South Asian countries, including Afghanistan, they are facing the problem of energy. They have a multiple options, but naturally gas is more cheaper if it is transported from there. Of course. This project is 1800, uh, around 1800, or what we call it, 14 kilometer project. Naturally starting from the gas field in the Kazakhstan and coming to the Afghanistan and Pakistan to India. Uh, generally, when we look about it, is the Turkestan has worked over it. Pakistan had already infrastructure in certain places, but we are also working and now we are more enthusiastic to build it. Afghanistan's four decades situation has further deteriorated because in 2008, when it was agreed, it was decided with this em emphasis that Afghanistan will cooperate, and now Afghan government is also expressing its willingness in that mm. context. To secure the uh, line that is passing line, Afghanistan. Because they know that it is their lifeline. And then the third, fourth country, which is most important and very attractive for the uh, Afghanistan and for the other, because Afghanistan will be earning around 400 million transit US dollar of their but India has detached it. Of course. So when India started detaching and expressing lesser interest, the projects like Taipei or in the Pakistan, uh, Iran, Pakistan, and India, these projects suffered. Mm -hmm. They had a big setback. Similarly, Taipei had a big setback. But then the government of Pakistan approached the Afghanistan government recently, and last in June there was a delegation came from Afghanistan at ministerial level. And they signed a number of the agreements, and in that they agreed that already Tunkusta, uh, 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 they built their portion, and Afghans agreed that we are going to build it further, and then we had also agreed. So even if it is built between these three countries, it make a lot of difference. I think uh, the former prime minister used the term game changer. Yes, 
type I execution is a game changer because with the pipeline you will also have an option to build a road network. Of course, of course. And with the pipeline, this is going to yeah, it, it's a permanent kind of a source of income for the transitoring countries, especially war-torn country like Afghanistan, and at the same time channelizing the energy resources of landlocked state, giving to the other landlocked state, and reaching to Pakistan to have a reach to the Arabian Sea. Of course. So it will be opening up. Not Taipei is not a single sort of thing. There is another tab, which is a transnational power transmission arrangement, which we recently agreed, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. What Pakistan is looking, Pakistan is looking that we have now infrastructure build up, mm. especially if you see our CPAC built uh, infrastructure right. leading to Gwadar and Gwadar become only a viable if the Central Asian trade started with it and the, it provides them a very shortest route and all weather route to the Turkestan also. So by this way Taipei or these projects seems uh, you can say game changer, not seems but they are a game changer, they are a game only changer. there are hurdles but of course, of course the governments are working. So this is uh, 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 like uh, Dr. Dispal rightly mentioned this is a game changer not only for Pakistan and Turkmenistan but for the region as well. But uh, I want to talk about India's role in this. Uh, why do you think that India keeps on creating hurdles when this is ultimately going to bring prosperity to Indian population as well? I think uh, the hegemonic attitude of India is not only manifested in the Tapai. It is as far as we have seen that the history of uh, Iran, Pakistan, India pipeline, India backed out. Mm. And, uh, Actually, it is a attitude which not only harms Pakistan, but the regional connectivity also. Mm, As you said, that the Central Asian state, they are rich in energy and they can move that energy pro and provide to the energy scarf countries and it is also one of the, that country. And its uh, economy and its industry will suffer. But because of the hegemonic, myopic attitude of the Indian leadership, such projects are suffering. And such regional cooperation is also suffering. And this is also a point which world should understand of course. that while Pakistan is going for the regional connectivity, is going for uh, very normal, peaceful living in the uh, region as well as in the uh, globe, India is not buying that idea. Hmm. And they are trying every time, not only as far as we see TAPI or IPI, hmm. on other forums also. Of course. Of A few course. days before we discussed about BRICS and we saw that India was one of the hurdles hmm. which did not allow Pakistan to join BRICS and also go for the economic betterment of its people. Hmm. And I think uh, we must understand also that such regional hegemonic attitude is going to uh, destabilize of the course, region, region of course. and as far as the economic uh, linkage is concerned the central asian states they are rich in uh, energy and if they can provide a cheaper rate to pakistan and india i think they should also join hand hmm. but a silver lining is that pakistan has decided to go single handedly for that transmission as well as for that gas pipeline concerned and Asian Development Bank has also is going to support of and to provide 7.6 billion us dollars materialize this project hmm. and I think with this India with the passage of time will understand that such hurdle created by him is not only damaging and denting its repute as well as image but at the same time it is going to enhance Pakistan image as a very peaceful regional collaborator state. Of course, of course, that is very important. And uh, to discuss this more, we are joined online by Dr. Snan Javed, uh, who is economist and expert in international affairs. Welcome to the program, uh, Dr. Snan Javed. Uh, so uh, we are talking about TAPI and the challenges we are facing and we have been facing uh, so far in implementation of this uh, important trans-regional uh, energy corridor. Uh, can you elaborate on some of the challenges uh, that Pakistan uh, foresees uh, in implementation of TAPI and how to address those challenges? See, uh, mainly uh, uh, our, our uh, uh, honorable participants have discussed uh, the, the mo most focal points are like Ta TAPI promises to supply 33 billion cubic meter of the gas per year to the Afghanistan and Pakistan and India. Of course, the two components like Afghanistan and India is a major problem. So uh, uh, if I can say like Afghanistan is an ally to India, that is not bad, uh, or even not a bad idea. But the Taipei Natural Gas and Pipeline is project of the Asian Development Bank Bank, and that aims to benefit the South Asian and Central Asian region through connectivity and mutual dependence. When the uh, uh, connectivity and mutual dependence, these two factors are the major hindrance between the whole of the project. 
So we cannot get, uh, I mean, all of the project from the Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, or maybe from getting from the Iran. So all of the gas pipeline project just is being hurdled by the Indian interference in the Afghanistan and so that uh, we cannot get anything. And a uh, second most important thing is that we cannot go for the Iran just because of the international sanctions. So we need to identify these issues uh, out of these, uh, I mean, uh, problems and attitudes. We must have to go forward and we must have to take, a, uh, you can say, a categorical line and hard line for that. We, because we must have to think on the lines of the economic and the more most economic pragmatic side of the any decision is the economy. So moreover, right, there course. are the all, yeah. Right, we will be uh, exploring more about economy as well. Uh, but Dr. Jaspal, like you earlier mentioned about uh, the recently signed uh, joint uh, implementation plan between Pakistan and Turkmenistan, can you elaborate on that and how that is going uh, to help implement uh, this uh, long, uh, you know, uh, long due project? Now, look, there is an encouraging factor is that when the ministerial level delegation visited Pakistan in June, and Pakistani side was very much welcoming. At that time, they, when they signed the TAP, they first time realized that we have to keep India out of the equation. Uh, equation. Otherwise, it will be always creating a trouble. And second is that uh, the good news is that they, on the TAP, I, though they didn't say that India is out, but still they realized that two far, 214 kilometers uh, from the Gulkash to the Afghanistan border, the Turkestan has already built the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Neither Afghanistan nor Pakistan has started the work over it, but now Pakistan is ready for it and Afghanistan is equally prepared for it. Uh, naturally, that will be a, having a good thing. And there is a realization by the international consortiums as well that India is not or India does not believe in regionalism in South Asia mm. because in the regionalism you have to treat each other equal, sovereign equal, whereas India is not treating it equal. So the, uh, the, I think the, when these delegations were meeting and memorandum of understandings was signed, at that time it was also decided at the official level that let's start our work. We can start importing, uh, making first build the pipeline for in the, these three countries and start importing when it start functioning naturally. It is a good news for the Turkestan and it's equally good news for Afghanistan and Pakistan because both need the gas or uh, power, uh, electricity. In that context, uh, when I use the word Earl of our former Prime Minister's game changer, basically game changer means that we have to work hard and he, they, at that time the government of Pakistan had expressed its resilience. Whatever the odds are there, we are going to overcome and implement this project or execute this project as soon as possible. The moment this project will be executed, obviously we are expecting a cheap gas and at the same time we are expecting the uh, transit from our Gwadar or the cheap uh, linkages with Central Asia and this project type I, or TAP will be not only going to, it will be going to indirectly strengthen CASA 1000. Of course. Uh, that will be also Central Asian and then above all as you said in the beginning, uh, ECO, hmm. Economic Cooperation Organization, all these countries are member of that and we ECO, are member of it. SCO, CARIC also Karik. has kind of same objectives. Yeah, and then there course. is another interesting thing is that if you see the CPAC Central Asian Corridor of the China Central Asian Corridor has been working and if this link between pa uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan is built uh, with the gas pipeline or this gas kind of connectivity, it is going to strengthen our CPEC. I of mean, course, uh, of course. We, we will be elaborating more on CPEC as well and Pakistan's promising relations with Turkmenistan, but after a short break. Welcome back. We are talking about Pakistan's relations with Turkmenistan. Dr. Sen, uh, when we talk about uh, economic relations, uh, 
uh, of course, uh, these are important. Uh, but let's talk about uh, the job potential uh, when uh, these energy corridors are created and uh, truly implemented. Uh, what kind of uh, opportunities and what sectors are going to be most benefited after the implementation of this important and significant project like uh, TAPAI? See, the, um, um, the bigger projects, and uh, no, no, uh, uh, I can say it is a, uh, bigger in the magnitude as well as the highest labor can be work over there, highest uh, uh, brain can uh, uh, go up there over there in the type of projects. But because we, we have to look on the Turkmenistan is known for the huge gas reserve and rank in the sixth largest uh, uh, largest in the world. However, it is only has to access in the Russian, Iranian and the Chinese market. So moreover, we are collaborating with the Russian, Iranian and Chinese, but, but focusing on to the uh, OCs and the significant natural gas and oil resources. So you are asking about the specific uh, target project areas, which is the natural gas and oil resources. So then is the two largest crop and the cotton, which is most which is produced for the export and wheat, which is domestically consumed. And although agriculture accounted for almost 8% of the GDP, it continues to employ nearly half of the country workforce, which is very much important. So, so uh, we are also working on that. And uh, after uh, under the SIFC plan, the, it has been mentioned that uh, the agriculture account for the 8% must be incurred. And then is a hydrocarbon. A hydrocarbon export, the bulk of which is natural gas going in to China, make up 25% of the Turkmenistan GDP. And Turkmenistan can be beneficial for Pakistan as an energy grid for industry and economy. And then it's offered the opportunity for the liquidative energy trade with India as well as deep sea uh, port facilities to the Gavadar uh, port in order to gain the access of the Arabian Sea for the trade and energy source. So the Pakistan vision to 25, uh, uh, till 25, it is a goal right. of the regional connective where we can have the highest level and highest number of the uh, job achievement as your uh, pertinent question would be. Right, of course, uh, that is very important. Uh, but uh, when we talk about implementation of uh, such significant uh, projects, uh, uh, of course, TAPAI and others, uh, CASA 1000 and others that Dr. Jaspal mentioned, uh, are there some uh, monitoring or uh, transparency measures in place to ensure uh, that these uh, projects, you know, meet the standards and they actually uh, benefit uh, the local population and create uh, the uh, job opportunities that they are meant to create? I think uh, in this regard, the last June meeting that is the joint implementation plan is the first step taken in the right direction to monitor also and to also ensure that the project end lines are met. Mm. And in that case, what we have seen that there are certain factors and uh, impediments which were out of control of the different countries. For, for example, the uncertain security situation in Afghanistan, which was not in control of, of either course. Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, or Pakistan. And at the same time, there have been certain factors like the revenue, like the tariffs, which has been mm. coordinated, which has and been discussed. Uh, and fluctuating prices of the, you know, get, uh, energy prices. Surely, because the project which was started in uh, to be 2010 and completed in 2016 and has not been yet. And mm. what we see that the fluctuation of the prices, they also affect the implementation of certain projects right. because it is a mega project it is not a simple project but at the same time the encouragement what we see now that pakistan and turkmenistan both are especially focus that this project should be completed at all cost and another factor is that now the taliban government in afghanistan they have showed also showed an inclination that they are able to provide security for the transit and also highlighted by uh, jaspal saab that they will get a lot of revenue as a transit, mm. which will going to support Afghanistan for rebuilding mm. for the for destruction which I have there seen. And at the same time, what is actually the now keynote for Pakistan is that we have only established a point of contact for this project where should there should be a committee also, mm. a monitoring team also. But I think now so, with the So there's a need for proper mechanisms to ensure the transparency to yeah. monitor these projects so these are not in place as of uh, we are talking as no, of now? No, not at place as for Taipei is concerned but mm -hmm. we have for CPAC. I think on the models of the CPAC we should also establish mm -hmm. a monetary mechanism mm -hmm. we can for the Thai that also. mechanism. And I think uh, now with the establishment of SIFC I okay. think they can take on this project also because this is the most important project as far as the energy is concerned. Mm -hmm. And what we see that if we get cheap gas 
our fertilizer industry is going to get a boost. Mm. Our textile energy is going to get a boost. Our export will be more. Our GDP will be more. Of course. So it is as very highlighted, uh, very aptly highlighted that it is a game changer. CPEC is a game changer, no doubt, but it is also having the same potential as the CPEC is concerned. Because if we are going to establish economic zone in CPEC, from where we will get energy. Of course. Of and course, this is the easy solution for states. So yeah. it is actually hand in gloves for CPEC also. And okay. it is also a requirement for CPEC also. Right. So I want to talk about uh, CPEC. Uh, uh, how does uh, Turkmenistan view its role in China-Pakistan economic corridor? And what objectives does it serve? Or uh, what purposes does it serve for Turkmenistan? And of course, Turkmenistan's interest in uh, CPEC, how this is going to ultimately impact uh, or enhance the bilateral ties between both the countries? Uh, the Turkestan has a great interest in the CPEC project, mm. naturally. Of course. It, uh, it's a very promising for them because uh, all the Central Asian countries, they are netted together or in this network, they are uh, participating. And if you recall, uh, CPEC, when the original is na it is a project of B uh, BRI, and original name was Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, this uh, one belt one road uh, where it's uh, spe uh, it was announced in september 2013 in central asia that gives the strength that the central asians are important and for the chinese these projects and the central asians are equally willing for it otherwise president xi never made this speech in in central asia where he announced this uh, belt and road initiative now later on if you see if they come from Afghanistan, only the, they have to cross the Afghanistan a few kilometers and they reach Pakistan. And from Pakistan, they have a CPEC reach to the Gwadar. And if you see in this context, they think that the CPEC projects are attractive for them for two reasons. Mm -hmm. One is, of course, the more CPEC projects prospered, there will be more demand of energy and the more uh, demand of the Turkestan's energy and revenue for them. So it of gives course. them a revenue. Second is that uh, it provides them an opportunity to invest in the various kind of the uh, sectors in Pakistan. And in the CPAC, as you know, we all are uh, working, the government is working for the, what you call it, economic zones, special economic hmm. zones, and they have an attraction. Hmm. The good news in this context is that the president Sardar of the uh, Turkestan, he's very much enthusiastic about this kind of a cooperation and they realize that we are a landlocked states, we are a rich in the na natural resources, but the channelization of these natural resources is imperative. Of course, there was a big obstacle and the obstacle was Afghanistan, but mm. now this obstacle is uh, gradually, you can say, raising. Or right. the, I, and I, I there's I one point mm. which I want to make it here clear. If you see in Afghanistan, they are building with the World Bank support a canal. Mm. Similarly, these projects are coming with the consortium like Taipei now, original it was less but now around 10 billion US dollar and Asia Bank is interested. Mm. So Afghans understand that this is essential for their survival as well. So that's why I, it seems, and that's why Turkestan also looking that if the Afghans are prepared or mentally prepared then there is a hope to materialize it. Of course, and uh, as you mentioned about uh, challenge of Afghanistan and security situation, but uh, of course there are other issues as well. So let's uh, talk about the logistical uh, issues and uh, maybe uh, geopolitical issues that both countries uh, could be facing. Uh, how uh, both countries are going to address those issues for successful uh, integration of Turkmenistan into the CPAC? Look, we have to keep in mind that the geopolitics is in a transition. And this geopolitics have been polluted with the strategic competition between the Russians and the Americans or the Rus Americans and the Chinese. Uh, Pakistan has always been a part of a geopolitics and it will remain a act, uh, you can say whether we like it or not, and it is a decisive actor in the global and regional geopolitics and especially in this part of the world. And we earlier used to be more hammering or uh, you can say expressing or uh, cashing our geostrategic importance, but now Pakistan has made up a very clear policy that we have swept our geostrategic with the geoeconomics. And with this, we are struggling for it. Unfortunately, our eastern neighbor is not 
permitting us that we have a full kind of a mm. geoeconomic vista and start working over it. But if you see in the geopolitics, we do not underestimate how the great powers are, you can say directly and indirectly influencing, uh, influencing the Afghanistan situation. And this Afghanistan situation stability is very significant for pipelines, for the road network and for the electricity transition. My understanding is that the regional actors, the Central Asians, Afghanistan or Afghanistan's six neighbor, they had a consensus that the war on Afghanistan burden is on our neighbors and neighbors have to behave. And if you see every neighbor of the Afghanistan has been expressing in the last, since uh, 2021, their desire that we are here or we are ready to work with the Afghan government for stability because that stability is going uh, is going to have a very you can say prosperous futuristic kind of a uh, <laughs> outlook so that's why Turkestan is working we I mean Pakistan and Turkestan has the same agenda in the regional politics which we call it from here towards the Euro Asia hmm. or Central Asia and South Asia very common and second commonality is that in our neighbor Afghanistan, they want a peace in Afghanistan, we want a peace in Afghanistan. Third agenda is where Brigadier have rightly pointed out the terrorism. The, in this context, the, we have a TTP problem, Tariq Taliban Pakistan, and the Turkestan or the Uzbeks have uh, the, the radicalized militant groups right. working in these kind of a things. Then we have a common platforms. You see already I mentioned the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Right. We will be talking about multilateral fora, but uh, let's talk about uh, economic cooperation between both the countries. Uh, Dr. Sen, uh, can you tell us about how the economic ties between Pakistan and Turkmenistan have evolved over time and what are some of the key uh, sectors uh, which are beneficial for both the countries? So, uh, f first of all, I would like to talk about the trade and uh, import balance because it is my focus area. And after that, I would right. like to answer about the Dr. Jaspal point because uh, he's talking about the Afghanistan. And I'm telling you, the, 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 we are against uh, uh, and we are uh, quite uh, we are taking the quite neutral line on uh, the regionalism, but. Uh, without uh, having a block politics, we cannot uh, assure this issue. We cannot resolve this issue. We have to deal with Afghanistan with a different, uh, I mean, direction. But let's talk about the economy. But uh, in, in the trade, so export from the Turkmenistan, the major area of the connectivity, the government of Pakistan also invited the Turkmenistan to explore gas connectivity from the uh, Chaman border to Gawadar and the building the LNG terminal at Gawadar which would uh, expand supplies to European and the global uh, LNG market, which is huge uh, project and it will be uh, coming very soon. And the export uh, in 2021 is the Pakistan export to 2.99 million to Turkmenistan. And the main product uh, that Pakistan exported to Turkmenistan are jute uh, woven uh, fabric and the uh, citrus. Uh, and few of the uh, matches, but it is not that much promising. Of course, we can export much of that area because, of course, uh, the Turkmenistan is completely landlocked, and we, uh, we we can only pass through from Afghanistan if we talk about the gas and uh, oil pipeline and all other. But uh, other thing, we can yes, we can uh, uh, send them the products. In 2021, the Turkmenistan, if I talk about the imports, uh, 2021 Turkmenistan exported 10.4 million, which is not again that promising, but we can uh, enhance much into billions. The main part of uh, product of Turkmenistan exported to Pakistan were raw cotton. And that same in the 22 years of export of Turkmenistan to Pakistan have increased at an annualized rate of 2.54 from uh, 5.9 million in 1999, right. and, but uh, still, uh, still in 10.4. But the significant area, the significant progress has been achieved on bilateral transit trade agreement between the Pakistan and Turkmenistan, and it will be signed soon, which is very much important. And Turkmenistan has a vast uh, uh, gas reserve. We have offered to supply cheaper gas to Pakistan for the market, and the energy agreement with the Pakistan will uh, help overcome gas of course, shortage. Of course, we have already uh, elaborated on the energy agreement. Uh, when we talk but about the, uh, the, economic the, and the, trade the relations, Dr. Stan, is, right. So when we talk about economic and trade relations, the private sector can play an important role. So uh, in your opinion, what kind of incentives can be given uh, to maybe business community in Turkmenistan and uh, in uh, Pakistan to invest in uh, both the countries? Uh, uh, what role can they play? 
other than the government collaborations? We have, we, 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 have to re, we have to remove the uh, bureaucratic uh, uh, glitches. We have to remove the bureaucratic uh, hurdles. And we have to create the one window operation under the SIFC. And of course, Central Asian state and uh, specifically Turkmenistan, as we are talking about the Turkmenistan, there is a huge potential. But it should be under the one window operation, direct operation and direct uh, relation to the Chamber of Commerce uh, from the Pakistan, Islamabad, Karachi, whatsoever, whosoever and the, the huge businesses must come up uh, there and one window operation should be very much crystallized very much uh, significant very much clear to each other very much uh, i mean without uh, any of the red tapeism involved and we must have to reshuffle all of the board of investment we must have to create the uh, format under the board of investment that is way too clear and we have to create the uh, maintain the website where the information is very much clear over there what type of the information what I, uh, what type of the product what type of the energy deal what are the agreements has been done and we must have to pass through uh, to our business community just remember and just uh, try to understand only the private uh, private sector can take us uh, from this uh, uh, the, the the economic glitches otherwise if we, the government has government must have to take his 10 percent of the part government make the policy government monitor the everything right. we but, have to uh, we have to we, provide conducive we, environment we, to the we, private uh, sector must, to invest in GDP. different sectors of course this is significant when we talk about the private sector they are going to play an important role and the government's role is just to provide a conducive environment for bringing in exactly. those investments let's talk about the multilateral cooperation and multilateral fora of course uh, karik seo eco are important organizations uh, what role do you think these organizations or platforms have played in uh, fostering closer ties between pakistan and turkmenistan look we have to keep in mind that uh, every uh, multinational organization have its own objectives and right. aims even if they like uh, seo has its own described you can say framework and in that its objectives are clearly defined but on the sidelines you start talking about the economics wherever you meet you get an opportunity to meet and discuss and resolve it but when you look about the ECO it's if you see what is its motto regional connectivity for prosperity when it happened a few years back in Pakistan ECO we highlighted this very much uh, Turkmenistan is very much part of that. So these forums are uh, the Karak, They are these two forums are purely meant for regional connectivity in the economic domains for the uh, for addressing the non-traditional security challenges for to these countries of the region. My understanding is that these forums have been cultivating a goodwill between or among the members at the bilateral level as well as at the multilateral level. Mm -hmm. So by that way, because of this, you can find now at the bilateral level, we are discussing if the at, and at the multilateral, we are discussing TAP at the bilateral, we are discussing the TAPI or as well as in, we mm. include the Afghanistan in that. So these forums have a very, very constructive contribution in the uh, what you call it uh, regional connectivity or state to state. Uh, economic cooperation. Of course, that is, that is very important. And when we talk about these multilateral uh, organizations, uh, what role do you think they play in ensuring uh, the regional security and stability? Do you think they help in uh, enhancing that objective as well? Uh, surely. But before answering your question, I would like to add what Dr. Snan sure. said very sure. vividly that if we see the cooperation, economic cooperation between Turkmenistan and Pakistan concerned, no doubt, Turkmenistan is a uh, small country having only 7 million population mm. but at the same time we see that they and Pakistan have established Pak Turkmen Joint Business Council mm. which is working a lot to have a very long and very collaborative cooperation between businessmen of Turkmenistan as Pakistan concerned and to curb the gap of our cotton crop and yield we can we are importing cotton and cotton yarn from Turkmenistan, as well as we have a good market for our food stuff, as well as for sports and leather goods in Turkmenistan. Now, coming over to your question, that multilateralism, mm -hmm. as very uh, I say aptly highlighted by Dr. Jaspal, that every organization it has own motto mm. and objectives which are to be met. But on the sidelines also, there is a lot of space available between mm. the both countries to establish more 
hmm. uh, I must say intricate and hmm. more intimate hmm. relationship as far as cooperation in different fields is concerned. Now hmm. we just Are there some specific uh, projects or initiatives uh, do you think that both Pakistan and Turkmenistan can take on uh, using their uh, leverage in these organizations? Especially. First is the rebuilding of Afghanistan mm -hmm. and having a harmonious relation with the Afghanistan. I think both countries, they are unanimous on the view that uh, the uh, uh, stable Afghanistan is going to give boost to the economic development and growth of the region. This is, I think, first point where both countries stand united. And the other point is the neutrality mm -hmm. on the regional issues. That is respecting the sovereignty and dignity of the other countries. Both countries, they are unanimous. And we have seen that they have collaborated on the war on terrorism also. And on other aspects, for example, the climate change is concerned, and other initiative of, of the international platform and forum is concerned. But at the same time, what we see, the political will for going together and fund certain project is lacking. Of course, and they need to work on that. Uh, so briefly, uh, tell us about the future trajectory of relations between Pakistan and Turkmenistan, Dr. Snan. So see, so trajectory is very much important. So there is two zones. One is a do dollar zone and second is a de-dollarized zone. Uh, so, so word is divided between the dollarized and de-dollarized zone. I, I'm telling you, it is just an alternative system. So we, Pakistan must have to focus uh, along with the Turkmenistan, along with the Tajikistan, along with the Kazakhstan, we must have to focus to be the part and the be to, to be the member of the BRICS so that because we have we must have to work with the de-dollarized zone because moreover if we focus on or if we uh, uh, I mean only uh, put our uh, all eggs in one basket that could be very much right. I mean we need a to area, but we must have to be on the de-dollarized zone. Of course, that is very important. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sen Javed, for joining us in today's program. Thank you very much, Brigadier Hamid Malik, for joining us in today's program. Thank you very much, Dr. Zafar Tamaz Jaspal, for joining us in today's program. Of course, in today's program, we talked about uh, exciting and historical as well as promising relations between Pakistan and Turkmenistan. There are challenges that both countries face when we talk about this region because Central Asia and South Asia is connected. Uh, so there are uh, shared challenges but shared desires and uh, both countries uh, are working uh, to implement uh, TAPAI and when this project is implemented this is going to be a game changer for the region. That's all from Game Changer tonight. Take care. Allah Hafiz.